Welcome back to Algebra 1 with Miss Betsy. Today we're continuing our discussion of quadratic equations by learning that the majority of the time we really need to solve quadratic equations by factoring. What I'm using as my text looks like this. It is the second edition of Algebra 1 for Christian Schools and it's published by Bob Jones University Press doesn't matter what edition of that text you're using. It doesn't matter even if you're using a book by that same publisher. This lecture is geared towards solving quadratic equations by factoring, and you can learn from this regardless of what text you're using. So let's pray and see what our lame question joke is for today and dive right into this material. Father, I thank you that you give to us a world that is filled with so much variety, that you give us variety of colors and animals and plants and people and personalities. Thank you that life is never boring with you. Help us today to uh, learn the things that you would have us to learn. Help me to speak clearly and to explain things effectively. Help my listeners to be able to understand and apply these new concepts in algebra. And I pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. And I promptly forgot what my joke is. Let me see if I can find it. Oh. What kind of seafood it tastes great with peanut butter? Well, the best seafood to go with the peanut butter would be jellyfish. So quadratic equations by factoring. And we're going to use, as we, <coughs> as we begin this, what we want to do is set our equation up so that it looks like we have what we're working towards is being able to apply the zero product property. So let's look at example one first, which is on page 447, which is x squared plus 2x minus 63 is equal to zero. x squared plus 2x minus 63 is equal to zero. Our zero product property tells us that if we have a combination of factors equal to zero, then we can go ahead and determine what our answers are because the solution, at least one of those products has to be equal to zero by itself. We don't have products yet on this left-hand side of the equation. We have a simple quadratic trinomial that we need to factor. We've learned that factoring polynomials or quadratics by inspection, we're looking for two numbers whose product is going to be equal to a negative 73, and whose sum will equal, be equal to a positive 2. We've had lots of practice on factoring. This is not a video on factoring. What you see here is there are two factors of 63 that will give us a sum of a positive 2. So we're going to factor, and we have x minus 7 times x plus 9 is equal to not 6. 7 times 9 is equal to 63, but this product of factors is equal to 0. We can check this to FOIL it. x times x is x squared. x times 9, positive 9x. Negative 7 times x, negative 7x gives us a sum of a positive 2x. Negative 7 times a positive 9 gives us a negative 63. So what we now have is a product of two factors equal to zero. We're able to use our zero product property that tells us when we have two or more factors equal to zero, at least one of those factors has to be equal to zero. So we say that either x minus 7 is equal to zero or x plus 9 is equal to zero. We solve that and we have two possible values that x can be equal to 7, or x can be equal to a negative 9. <clears throat> we have to check both of these solutions. 7 minus 7 times 7 plus 9. Is that equal to 0? Well, yes, obviously anything times 0 is always equal to 0. And the reason that that's obvious is that you have learned that property that states that any number times zero is always equal to zero. So seven works. Negative nine, we're going to see, also works. We have negative nine minus seven times 
times the quantity negative 9 plus 9. Is that going to be equal to 0? Yes, because we have negative 16 times 0. And anything that's equal to 0, do what I mean. anything multiplied by 0 is always going to be equal to 0. So we have two solutions to this quadratic equation. It's a quadratic equation because its highest degree is 2. Solution to this quadratic equation, we have two solutions. Either x is equal to 7 or x is equal to a negative 9. And what we see is in our last section in here, we've just written that x is 7, x is equal to 9. We've also said that x is equal to 7 or negative 9. But frequently when you're dealing with quadratic equations and the way they want you to show your solutions now is to show your solutions as a solution set. So the solution is the set that contains the elements negative 9 and 7. And this is how you need to show your solution. Show your solution this way. Using set notation. So the solution to the quadratic equation x squared plus 2x minus 63 is the set that contains the elements negative 9 and 7. So let's go ahead now and look at example number 2. And we have x squared minus 49 is equal to 0. x squared minus 49 is equal to 0. You should remember that whenever you order a polynomial, you always set that up in descending order of variable. So x squared minus 49 is set up properly. Just like prior to this problem, we had x squared minus 2x plus 63. x squared plus 2x minus 63 was equal to 0. We had descending powers. I want to make sure you have descending powers here. You notice what we have here? X, is a per, x squared is a perfect square. 49 is a perfect square. This is the difference of two squares. You factor x squared minus 49 as x plus 7 times the quantity x minus 7 is equal to 0. And that is the difference of two squares. Square minus square. It's the difference of two squares. Almost look, think of it as a square barbell. If you do not recognize that this is the difference of two squares, and you do not know how to factor the difference of two squares, if this means nothing to you, x squared minus y squared factors as x plus y times x minus y, then you need to go back and learn how to factor the difference of two squares. We can now use our zero product property that was going to tell us that either the factor x plus 7 has to be equal to 0 or the factor x minus 7 has to be equal to 0. So x can be either negative 7 or x is equal to a positive 7. If x is a negative 7, this factor here becomes 0, doesn't it? Negative 7 plus 7 is equal to 0, so the entire product is 0. And actually, I just said showing it into this factored form, but we need to go ahead and do our substitution to the original equation. If x is a negative 7, and we square that, minus 49, is that equal to 0? Yes, because negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49 but you have to make sure that it's the negative 7 itself that you are squaring. If you show this as net the, without the parentheses, this says the opposite of 7 squared, which would be a negative 49. Be careful to use your parentheses so that you know what you're squaring. So negative 7 squared is 49. 49 minus 49 is 0. A positive 7 squared 
of course, is 49 also. 49 minus 49 is 0. So our solution using set notation would be the set that contains the elements negative 7 and 7. Show your solutions to quadratic equations using set notation. Now, let's see what we have for our next example. And my board marker there is getting very messy. The next example that I have says give the solution set to 2x squared is equal to 7x plus 4. 2x squared is equal to 7x plus 4. That you can do nothing with. In order to solve a quadratic equation, you must put that quadratic equation in standard form, which looks like ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. You have to have everything on one side of the equation. Typically, you're going to want it on your left side of the equation and have everything set equal to zero. So this becomes 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 is equal to zero. Now we need to factor this trinomial. We have a negative constant term here, so we know that one of our factors is separated by a positive sign. One of our, one of our factors is a sum. One of our factors is a difference. We need a product of neg negative 4. We need a sum of negative 7. So we have 2x, 2 times a negative 4 is negative 8. 1 times a negative 4 is negative 4. 2x times 4 is negative 8x. Positive 1 times x gives us our negative 7x. We have factored 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 into these two binomials. Our zero product property tells us that either one or the other of those two factors has to be equal to zero. So 2x is equal to negative 1. So x can be either a negative 1 half or x can be a positive 4. Let me make certain that I've done this correctly. Okay, now what do we need to do? We need to check and make sure. And we can check it mentally if we want to. Right here. Right here is our equation that we've moved around. We can also set this into the original equation because we don't want there to be any possibility that we have done our um, got the sign mixed up. So let me erase this standard form over here. And rather than do it completely in my mind, let me write it out for you. 2x squared is equal to 7x plus 4. With the value of 4, 2 times 4 squared, is that equal to 7 times 4 plus 4? What is 4 squared? 4 squared is 16. 2 times 16 is 32. 32, of course, is equal to 28 plus 4. So this value here is a solution to our original equation. But what about this negative 1 half? 2 times negative 1 half squared, does that have the same value as 7 times a negative 1 half plus 4? What is 4? 4 is equal to 8 halves. Right? Negative 1 half squared is negative 1 half times negative 1 half is 1 fourth. Don't forget how to multiply fractions together. You're going to be doing it all the time. 
2 times 1 fourth. Is that the same as negative 7 halves plus 8 halves? Is that the same as 1 half? Yes. 2 fourths is equal to 1 half. Your problem said, give the solution set to this equation. So the solution set means use set notation. So the solution is negative one half and four. Make sure you take the time to check your answers. Check them mentally if you can or if you desire to. Unless they tell you you have to check them, you have to show your check. You don't actually have to write the check down. Wisdom would say that a lot of the time you're going to want to at least jot something down so that you're verifying that you're getting the correct answer. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to see how we can solve a word problem that involves a quadratic equation. This is typically going to be something that involves like area. If you're carpeting a floor, if you're planting a garden, if you want to do a fence, and we can solve this using a quadratic equation. So let's look at our final example here and see what we have. This says, find the dimensions of a rectangular room five feet longer than wide, requiring 204 square feet of carpet. So let's draw a picture first. We have a rectangular room. It is five feet longer than it is wide. So we're going to say, let x equal the width of the room. And we could also you know, solve this in using two equations, two variables, but we're not going to. We're going to solve this with a quadratic equation. If x is the width of the room, then the length of the room has to be x plus 5 because it tells us that the length of the room is 5 feet longer than the width. So the length of the room is x plus 5. <coughs> it says find the dimensions of a rectangular room 5 feet longer than wide, requiring 200 four square feet of carpet. Okay, what does it mean when it says 204 square feet of carpet? Well, carpet is going to cover the floor of that room. So, are we going to be wanting to find the perimeter? Or are we going to want to find the area of the room? We're going to find the area Area is length times width. I'm going to write it as width times length. x times x plus 5 is equal to 204. Length times width is equal to area. It takes 204 square feet of carpet to cover this room. Now what we need to do is solve this equation. Can we just go ahead and say that either x is equal to 204 or x plus 5 is equal to 204? No, because you have to set your quadratic equation equal to 0. Make sure that you have everything set equal to 0. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. We have x squared plus 5x is equal to 204. Can we do it now? No. Well, it's not factored. And it's not set equal to 0. x squared plus 5x minus 204 is equal to 0. Now, what we have to do, we have a trinomial here that we need to factor. We have their product has to equal 204. The sum has to equal 12. So we're going to have to do a little bit of manipulating here to say what times what is equal to 204. There are a couple of different ways that you can approach this. 
I'm thinking prime factoring might be a good way here. Or you can say, let's see. Hmm. How about 4 goes into 204, 51. Well, we have 4 times 51. That's not doing us any good at all. Okay. It's not divisible by 5. What about 6? Can we divide this by 6? Does 6 go into 204? 3 sixes are 18, 24. Okay, we have 6 and 36. That's better. But we have to come up with a sum. And of course, one of these is going to be positive, one's going to be negative. We're trying to get a 5. There's not a difference of 5 there. Well, can we divide by 8? At this point, I'm going to probably go ahead and prime factor would be what you would want to do. But what you're going to eventually arrive at is that you can divide 204 by 12. 12 goes into 20 one time. You have 84. And you're going to end up with the pair of factors 17 times 12. 17 times 12. So you have x minus 17 times x, uh, it's going to be x plus 17 times x minus 12 is equal to 0. Now why did I just change that? Why did I say from x minus 17 to x plus 17? I said x plus 17 because our center term here is a positive 5. We have positive 17, negative 12 gives us a positive 5. 17 times a negative 12 gives us a negative 2 of 4. So we have factored this correctly. Now we have arrived at the point where we can apply the zero product property. What's that going to do? That tells us that either x plus 17 has to be equal to zero or x minus 12 has to be equal to zero. We have two choices. Either x can be equal to negative 17 or x can be equal to a positive 12. Well, are both of those solutions possible? Do we need to go ahead and check them? Make sure that they work in our original equation? Mm, no. Why not? We have an extraneous solution. Can length ever be a negative number? No. Length is never going to be a negative number, so our, so our value of x is equal to a negative 17 is incorrect. x equals 12 is the value for our variable. Are we done now? No? Let's go back and look at our problem. This is a word problem. It says, find the dimensions of a rectangular room 5 feet longer than wide, requiring 204 square feet of carpet. What's it asking for? It's asking for the dimensions. x is 12. What is x equal to? x is the width of the room. So the answer is, the room is 12 feet wide, 17 feet long, or the dimensions of the room are 12 by, did I say 5? 12 feet wide, 17 feet long. You need to tell them the dimensions of the room. So those are some of the things that you'll be able to accomplish, some of the types of problems that you can solve as you factor quadratic equations. Work hard, allow yourself plenty of time to do these. Send me a text if you're having difficulty. I'll see you next time.